Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Dry docks are vital to the operational readiness and longevity of the U.S. Navy fleet. These massive structures allow ships, including aircraft carriers, submarines, and destroyers to be lifted out of the water for critical maintenance, repairs, and upgrades that are impossible to perform while afloat. As the Navy transitions to newer classes of ships and submarines, modernization of dry docks is equally essential to accommodate advanced hull designs and heavier displacement. This procedure can be clearly observed in footage of the USS Fitzgerald, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, as it enters a dry dock in Yokosuka, Japan. In this case, the Fitzgerald is not undergoing routine maintenance, but looking to inspect damage caused during a collision with another vessel. The ship is gently guided into the flooded dry dock channel by several powerful tugboats. They're small, but powerful. Modern tugboats can exert over 60,000 pounds of pulling force, enough to steer warships weighing more than 100,000 tons into tight dry docks with pinpoint control. Once it is in place with its keel positioned over the dry dock supports, the water is slowly pumped out back into the sea. This gives engineers a full view of the hull, allowing for the damage to be inspected, evaluated, and repaired. Destroyers like the Fitzgerald are highly versatile ships, participating in anti-ballistic missile missions, anti-submarine warfare, and strategic land strikes. The average Arleigh Burke-class ship is more than 500 feet long and armed to the teeth with surface-to-air missiles, torpedoes, and more. They also carry around 22 officers and up to 350 enlisted men and women. Though not quite as cramped as your average submarine, the berthing area of a destroyer is by no means comfortable. Generally, a 24 bunk space will consist of three sinks, one shower, and two toilets. There is also little separation between one's professional life aboard the ship and their personal one. Most bunks are stacked in numbers of two or three, and many crew members do their best to make the space their own. We're allowed to have like an eight by 11 sized area for, for family photos or your kitty cat, your doggy, goldfish, whatever you want. Um, we each have our EVDs or emergency escape breathing devices, just in case, you know, Bad business happens, lights go down, there's a fire and smoke, we can clock that guy on and we've got good breathing air for about 15 minutes to be able to egress out of this space in topside. Sleeping areas are not the only place aboard a destroyer where one will find themselves struggling for personal space. Gym and fitness areas are also incredibly cramped and boast limited options for staying in shape. Fortunately, crew members have learned to work together so that they can maintain themselves as well as the ship. Nuclear submarines are vital in ensuring peace in the world as a deterrent. These submarines usually serve for decades, providing sailors with safety and whatever amenities can be squeezed into these vessels.
The process of dry docking and launching submarines involves intricate steps and careful coordination. Dry docking entails removing a ship from the water to facilitate work on its exterior below the waterline. Ships are constructed on dry docks, with keel blocks positioned and lines prepared to handle the vessel. This transition from water buoyancy to dry dock blocks is a critical and potentially dangerous phase, as inadequate block strength can lead to the ship overturning. Graving docks are often used for constructing large ships like tankers and aircraft carriers. Once the hull is sufficiently completed, ships are launched, either by floating in place or sliding into the water. Launching from a building dock involves flooding the dock to the necessary depth. In order to maintain a vigilant watch over the surface of the water while remaining undetected by surface craft or aerial surveillance, submarines rely on a remarkable device known as the periscope. <laughs> while the principle behind its design is seemingly straightforward, involving the reflection of objects through mirrors or prisms, the periscope is actually a highly intricate and sophisticated piece of equipment. Its complex construction enables submarines to obtain valuable visual information from a concealed position beneath the waves. By utilizing this ingenious technology, submarines can discreetly observe their surroundings, ensuring operational effectiveness and enhancing their situational awareness in the ever-evolving maritime domain. Now, let's explore the capability of these massive submarines to destroy targets with unparalleled accuracy, utilizing their formidable torpedo missiles. A torpedo is a cigar-shaped, self-propelled underwater missile specifically designed to be launched from submarines, surface vessels, or airplanes. Its primary purpose is to explode upon contact or within proximity of the hulls of surface vessels and submarines, delivering a devastating blow. Modern torpedoes are equipped with intricate devices that allow precise control over their depth and direction. They can follow a predetermined plan or adjust their course based on external signals received during the mission. Furthermore, these advanced torpedoes are equipped with a sophisticated detonation mechanism that ensures the explosive-filled warhead is triggered upon striking the intended target or even when it comes into close proximity. There comes a time when every submarine gets too old and must end its career. These events are called decommissioning. The decommissioning procedure of a nuclear submarine commences upon its arrival at a specified site, such as Naval Base Kitsap Bremerton. The submarine first undergoes the defueling of its nuclear reactor a difficult procedure necessitating specialist personnel and stringent safety regulations. The ship is subsequently deconstructed 
beginning with the removal of classified equipment and weapon systems. The nuclear reactor chamber is meticulously sealed and transported as a single unit to designated storage locations. Valuable equipment and materials are recovered for utilization in other vessels or repurposed. The hull is segmented and processed in accordance with stringent environmental and nuclear regulatory standards. The procedure generally spans several years and entails various authorities overseeing the appropriate management of radioactive materials, hazardous waste, and classified elements. The Submarine Recycling Program, SRP, commences post-defueling upon the vessel's arrival at the shipyard. The procedure commences with comprehensive decontamination of all systems and compartments, guaranteeing that radiation levels comply with stringent government criteria. Teams methodically disassemble interior elements, meticulously recording and safeguarding historical artifacts. All hazardous substances, including asbestos, PCBs, and lead-based paint, are eliminated in accordance with environmental requirements. Precious metals and equipment are extracted for recycling or repurposing in other Navy ships. During submarine decommissioning, hull segments are detached via an exact cutting procedure employing a heat cutting apparatus. Each section, weighing hundreds to thousands of tons, necessitates comprehensive preparation and engineering calculations before removal. Teams initially identify several secure lifting locations for each section, generally weighing around 2,000 tons. The reactor chamber necessitates meticulous planning because of its nuclear containment specifications. The hull cutting adheres to specified lines delineated by engineers, guaranteeing structural integrity throughout the removal procedure. Weather conditions must be optimal, characterized by negligible wind and unobstructed visibility. Numerous safety teams oversee each part of the activity. The entire procedure necessitates meticulous coordination among cutting crews, riggers, engineers, and safety experts. Preparing for each section removal operation may require many days before a single lift. Dry docks represent far more than mere maintenance platforms. They are critical enablers of the U.S. Navy's global reach, technological superiority, and long-term fleet sustainability. Whether it's routine servicing, complex hull repairs, or the complete recycling of aging submarines, these facilities provide the secure, controlled environments necessary for every stage of a warship's life cycle. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.